Welcome back, what it is. It's the Nader Raids game picks, finally. 2024 season, man. It's literally three days away. Three days away. Actually, it's actually tomorrow, you know, Thursday night football. So that just goes to show you how long and patient we've all been waiting for football to come back around. Now your Sundays will be booked. You know, go to church, say prayers, and then, you know, make sure you catch your action on your favorite team. Um, it's, it's good to have y'all back, man. Y'all have seen Nader in the closet, Nader in the getaway car. Uh, you know, now it's Nader with the Nader in the living room, you know, so, you know, I'm living comfortable about to deliver y'all these game picks. You know, we don't do no Vegas odds. So let's jump right into it. Week one, 2024 NFL season. So let's go ahead and jump into it. Thursday night football, uh, the season opener chiefs who are the reigning Super Bowl champs host the Baltimore Ravens whom they beat in the AFC Championship last year in Baltimore. Uh, this time, Chiefs are at home. Uh, I think uh, last year they lost to the Lions on the opener in Arrow in, at Arrowhead Stadium, made some mistakes. I think the Chiefs uh, prevail this game. Uh, the Ravens have a new look, uh, have Derrick Henry in their backfield, and uh, still the same elite defense. Uh, lost a couple players. They lost Patrick Queen to the Steelers. And uh, the Kansas City Chiefs are banking on some rookies, and uh, still have a returning, uh, a couple returning veterans. They paid uh, Chris Jones as well on that defensive interior. Uh, same with Creed Humphrey, their center, uh, reached a max extension. So they're keeping their core trench players intact. I think the Chiefs take this one home, 27 to 23. Uh, that way, starting off the season, 1-0. Uh, now there's a Friday night game as well this year. This one in Sao Paulo, Brazil. I believe it's the first NFL game played in Brazil. So, you know, spreading down to South America as well. So here is the Packers at the Eagles, neutral field. Uh, Packers and the Eagles. I think uh, both teams here uh, are have a lot to prove. You got the Eagles who are uh, highly favored to win the NFC East. And then you got the Green Bay Packers who are coming off a surprising postseason run last year and just paid their uh, quarterback a max extension uh, in Jordan Love. So uh, in this game, I think uh, defensively, there will be um, the, uh, the defenses rise to the occasions here. I think offenses uh, take some time to get to get uh, to get incremented. Like, I think it's like going to be a little sloppy in the beginning. But I do think the Eagles prevail, uh, mainly because I think they have a little bit more experience, particularly on their offensive and, uh, and uh, defensive lines, respectively. Uh, so I do think that the Eagles are fairly young now on their defensive line, but um, they added some free agents uh, for their linebacking unit, which has always been a revolving door for them in the past three, four years. So I think that edges them out here. Although the Packers also have a great linebacking core unit. That'll be a good matchup to watch here. Both linebacking cores against their running games. But I got the Eagles coming out on top here, 21 to 17. Now we're on to our Sunday slate of games. Let's go ahead and get through these. Uh, week one, there's really not much to uh, anticipate. You can't really base off much off the preseason as that's people fighting to make the roster. But uh, in the Steelers at Falcons, uh, one person that made the made a name for himself during the preseason is uh, Steelers starting quarterback Russell Wilson, who will get the start against the Falcons. Falcons have a new face at quarterback as well in Kirk Cousins. So it's an interesting uh, thing, new faces and new uniforms. Uh, and this will be, I think, will be a close one. A defense, defensive battle. I think a lot of sloppiness on both sides of the ball. But I think uh, Atlanta's offense overcomes their mistakes and sloppiness more so than the Steelers' offense. Um, the Steelers traded away Deontay Johnson, so they have fewer weapons. They do have George Pickens, of course, but obviously one man can't run the whole show. Uh, so I think the Falcons win at home 22-20. to Advancing now, Cardinals at the Bills. Uh, the Cardinals are in a... Interesting position. The Bills uh, have let go of uh, quite a receiver, Stephon Diggs, uh, Gabe Davis. Uh, they cut a lot of their veteran uh, secondary players, Tredavious White, uh, Micah Hyde, and Jordan Poyer. So it's going to be a lot of uh, growing pains for them. They are at home. I think that gives them the edge. They're always tough to play in Buffalo and Arizona. Usually starts the season off very fast, but since Kyler Murray has been hurt a long time, uh, well, he played the, towards the end of last year. But it's going to take some some time to get, I think, get into the uh, um, to get into rhythm again. But look for Marvin Harrison Jr. to maybe uh, to maybe torch this Bills secondary since they're missing quite a few veterans. But it's going to be interesting to see. But I do think the Bills come out on top here, twenty nine to twenty. And the top Titans at the Bears. Uh, Titans were six and eleven last year, and the Bears were seven and ten. Bears made a big trade for some for Montez Sweat, a uh, pass rusher last year, and he's made big impacts for him. 
I would say look for him to make a uh, noise here and uh, give Will Levis a hard time. They did draft, uh, have a revamped O-line, but they had the, one of the worst o offensive lines last year, the Tennessee uh, Titans. Um, traded for, they signed Calvin Ridley. They have, uh, of course, DeAndre Hopkins. Uh, signed Tony Pollard, and then Tajay Spears may be looking to get more touches in the backfield there. But I think this game, uh, the Bears are at home. They've lost their last two. They lost their last home opener. They won was against the Niners in 2022. I think this could be a similar game. Maybe it's rainy, maybe bad weather. This would definitely favor Chicago, as I think their defense has the edge here over Tennessee. So I think the Bears win here 20-16, to giving Caleb Williams his NFL debut uh, on a good note, on a victory. And then I see the next matchup, we have the Patriots at the Bengals. Uh, the Pats, new head coach, uh, they drafted a rookie quarterback, third overall pick. He is not starting. It is Jacoby Brissett that's the starter. Uh, they let go of Matt Judon, who went to the Falcons because they didn't um, pay him an extension. But I think, uh, I think this is a game that where the Patriots realize that they are at some point going to have to throw out their rookie quarterback. Maybe not in the first four weeks, but maybe after that. Bengals, I don't expect nothing different. T. Higgins and Jamar Chase should be suited up. Uh, we're going to be interesting to see who they, uh, how they uh, run by committee in the backfield. I know Chase Brown, I believe, is going to be the starter. Very fast and elusive. So we'll see how that works out and see, uh, you know, blonde, blonde haired Joe Burrow, uh, see how he comes out and uh, how they protect him, considering the Patriots fairly have a respectable defense. So I think the Bengals prevail at home here, 24 to 13. Moving on now, Texans at the Colts. Colts um, had a rookie quarterback last year, only played four games, uh, Anthony Richardson, so this is his first game back. C.J. Stroud, rookie of the year last year, coming off an impeccable season and a divisional round playoff run for the Houston Texans. They added uh, Trevon, uh, I mean, Stephon Diggs and Daniil Hunter on defense. They've added some pieces, and D'Amico Ryan is only getting that uh, group up at the par. But I can expect to see a little sloth, sophomore slump from this team, although I still expect them to make the playoffs. Uh, facing the Colts at home, this was the game that they had to win last year in, in Indianapolis to clinch the playoffs against Gardner Minshew uh, and the uh, Gardner Minshew-led Colts. Now it's Anthony Richardson. Uh, look for, I see uh, I see them going toe-to-toe, -to -toe, Richardson against Stroud, but I think Stroud has the upper hand because he's more of a pure passer. Richardson is very athletic and raw, so maybe it's um, a lot we haven't seen and learned from him yet. So it'll be interesting to see this matchup. But I do have the road team winning this one. Texans beating the Colts 34-24. to 24. All right, now moving on to the Jaguars at Dolphins. Two, two Florida teams uh, in, uh, will be playing each other. So uh, maybe it's uh, probably a 50-50 split in the, in, the, in the arena there. Um, I think the Dolphins did some housekeeping things, kept their quarterback, uh, gave him an extension. Both these quarterbacks, Trevor Lawrence for the Jaguars and Tua Tagovailoa for the uh, Dolphins both signed their extensions, so both these quarterbacks are locked in. I think the Jaguars have a lot to prove because they started such on a good note last year, ended up missing the playoffs, and the Dolphins really had a hard time against winning caliber teams. Um, consider they were a playoff team last year as well, but couldn't really beat many uh, other teams that were uh, that had good records, other than like a few. So I think the Dolphins here at home, uh, Mike McDaniel. Uh, you know, gets up to speed, the deception, Devon uses his speed, and I think uh, the Dolphins come out on top here, 31 to 23. Now the Panthers at the Saints, this is a divisional matchup. Uh, the Saints at home are very tough, usually a tough opponent. The New Orleans Superdome is always known for being loud, and the fans make a lot of noise, make it hard for the signal, uh, the signal callers and snap cadence of the other team. Uh, Bryce Young looking to bounce back from a very bad rookie year. They had the worst record in the league, although they didn't even get the first pick, 2-15. Uh, playing against the Saints team that have their questions to fill, too. But I think this early in the season, um, we, get to see, uh, we get to see the Saints get back to their run game. And then uh, maybe Derek Carr can hit some open passes on play action. It didn't seem to work very well when he just had to drop back and pass the ball around, uh, considering he's not the most elusive in the pocket. But I, I want to see Bryce Young at least have some success here. He's got Deontay Johnson. They just traded for him. Uh, and then Jonathan Brooks, they drafted from Texas, a rookie running back. Not so sure if he's going to play this first week. And Xavier Leggett, rookie receiver out of South Carolina, has like a Debo Samuel type build. So that'll be interesting to see how they utilize him. Maybe he gets some snaps and uh, carries in the backfield. Either way, I still do have the Saints beating the Panthers here 27 to 17. Now the Vikings at the Giants, uh, rematch from the 2022 wildcard round. And the Giants here at home, 
uh, with uh, the Vikings having uh, a rookie quarterback that is out for the season uh, towards ACL. So now it's Sam Darnold, I believe, that's going to be the one starting here uh, against the Giants team that added some weapons, but still a lot of question marks around their uh, main their quarterback Daniel Jones, as he very played very didn't play so well last year. The games he did play, so this is this is one of those games where I think the home team should win and has the advantage the all the whole game. And then I see the road team coming in the end and just stealing a win and uh, making it for a lot of frowns up in New York. Um, so yeah, I think the Vikings here, the road team wins 22 to 19 in a, a pretty sloppy game. And I see the, the home team letting slip away in the end. Now we get on to our Sunday uh, evening slate games, the 4 or 5 o'clock. Now the 1 o'clock window Eastern time games are closed. Uh, eight games will be going on at one time, you know, be sure to check out the NFL Red Zone or <laughs> whatever you prefer. Maybe just watch every, each game by itself. I know you got the people out there too. So the Raiders at Chargers. I think the Chargers now going into the Jim Harbaugh era. They drafted a rookie left tackle and it uh, looks like they're going to emphasize heavy on the running game. Justin Herbert uh, is a great quarterback, but obviously any great quarterback is uh, is not can't be their full potential without a solidifiable uh, um without a, a respectable running game. Uh, a lot of a lot of play a lot of defenses just go in that too high shell if the teams can't uh, the the too high look of safety if teams can't run the ball because they don't need to add extra help in the box. But I do think the Chargers establish the run here as I remember from watching the Cowboys play the Raiders in the preseason that they uh they had a hard time st stopping the run the uh the Las Vegas Raiders did. So uh, I'm interested to see uh, how this plays out. Gardner Minshew is starting quarterback for the Raiders. Um, questions there to be answered of consistency and how they can uh, maintain, considering they have the, some decent weapons. But I think the Chargers here win at home, 28 to 26. Maybe Mike Williams can come out of his soft, uh, can show that he's actually worthy of that first round pick, considering he had a pretty bad rough year last year. If he gets some opportunities one-on-one -on -one down the field. Broncos at Seahawks, rematch of Super Bowl 48. Uh, which was uh, over 11 years ago now. I think uh, the Seahawks are uh, an interesting team. You know, Geno Smith has been a journeyman quarterback now, and this is third year starting. Uh, I just don't see him doing much more. Uh, I think uh, Kenneth Walker in their backfield is their biggest weapon. DK Metcalf, Tyler Lockett, Jackson Smith, and Jigba looking out for a breakout year, I see, from him. Um but it's usually been their defense, and I think the Broncos are going to come here and run the ball heavy. They're have a rookie quarterback starting for the first time, and Bo Nix, who uh, will be a rookie at tw age 25. An advantage if you ask some, a disadvantage for others. Uh, but I think it may be an advantage to have played so many years in college. You get to mature, you know, at, at your own pace, and you got to live through the NIL period too, so I'm sure that gave him some confidence. I think the Broncos go into Seattle and actually come out with a win here. I think... Um, I think the Broncos' defense makes some stop, the stops necessary, forcing the Seahawks to get field goals when they have chances in the red zone. And the Broncos, I think, cash in on those opportunities. Uh, look for Cortland Sutton uh, to have a good game. And uh, look for Bo Nix to be in rhythm and uh, connecting on a lot of passes early in the game to get him going. It's be an interesting game to watch. I think the Broncos win 23-20. to 20. Now the Cowboys at the Browns. This is the uh, prime time America's game of the week. I think the Browns here are a very tough matchup. Cowboys have two starting rookies uh, on their offensive line and uh, a new defensive coordinator, Mike Zimmer, who was brought in to help solidify the Cowboys' run defense to stop the run. The Browns are one of the highest rated running teams in the league. They love to run the ball. That AFC North football smack you in the mouth. This is where I think the Cowboys have their first test against that type of football, considering they got smacked in the mouth uh, in the postseason last year. They want to be able to have that. Uh, in their repertoire going into this season. This will be the first test. Uh, I think the Browns are missing Nick Chubb. He's still not back from his uh, knee injury. They're missing one of their defensive backs. I believe it's Greg Newsom. Uh, and so I see this being a good matchup for um, the receivers of the Cowboys against the Browns defense, uh, defensive secondary. But up front is where the true test is going to come. So I expect this to be a barn burner, a lot of flags thrown, uh, special teams here, I think, will be the key. And I think Cowboys edge the Browns on their special teams, which is why I'm giving them the win, 24-18, uh, to 18, on the road in a hostile environment, in the dog pound. So uh, can't wait for that game. Can't wait for that. Uh, moving on now, the last 4.25 uh, p.m. Sunday Eastern slot time game is going to be the Commanders at the Buccaneers. This is another game where I think the Buccaneers 
are going to be very uh, surprised of how the rookie starting quarterback, uh, second round, second overall pick, Jaden Daniels, plays and how he looks. There's not a lot of tape on him. He's a dual threat. Uh, I think the commanders come out swinging here uh, under new coach Dan Quinn. A lot of new acquisitions. I think the most free agents uh, in the they had a lot of free agent signings in the off season, and I think them they were just behind the Cardinals with most picks in the first hundred picks of the draft. So a lot of young talent, a lot of new faces there. It's going to take some time for them to gel, I believe, and then uh, if the right coach can bring it out of them. But the Buccaneers are that are that team that I've seen them play very bad for stretches and then very good. They just have veteran presence. They have lost a couple of their players, Shaquille Barrett, uh, Devin White. But I do see them coming out on top here as Antoine Winfield Jr. is the key piece. I see him uh, having to get... I see Antoine Winfield in the secondary and the defense making adjustments to Jaden Daniels. He's going to do some damage in the first half. And I think in the second half, the Buccaneers come out and uh, make an adjustment. Baker Mayfield um, got an extension. Him and Mike Evans are going for... Uh, I think are going to go for over 15 touchdown uh, passes to receiving touchdowns between each other. Love to see it. Chris Godwin is still as reliable as ever. And Rashad White make, made a name for himself last year. He was going to be uh, taking the uh, carries and uh, a lot of uh, targets out of the backfield. So I see this one being a lot of points. I see the commanders uh, being being on top in the first half and then losing in the second half. Uh, the Buccaneers at home here, 38 to 28 for the commanders. Now it's Sunday Night Football, the rematch of the wild card between the Rams and the Lions, Jared Goff versus Matt Stafford, the trade that happened between them. Uh, Lions are at home. I think the Rams um, have some good pieces. I think they're well coached. I think their defense is going to be better than expected. And then I also think the uh, Lions may come out a little overly eagerly excited and they may shoot themselves in the foot uh, a handful of times more than what they want. And I think the Rams are going to be make make less mistakes like penalties and um, on special teams, maybe fumbles or running out of bounds. Uh, so I do think the Rams here come out on top 27 to 25 in the very entertaining, thrilling Sunday night opener. Then the Monday night football game is between uh, the New York Jets at the San Francisco 49ers. A lot of questions around the Niners in the offseason. Brandon Ayuk, Trent Williams, they paid those players. The Jets, of course, Aaron Rodgers, uh, feels like a Super Bowl or bust type season for them always. Uh, since they acquired the uh, 40, 41 year old veteran. So I think the, this is a great test for the Jets. I think I see them coming out blow for blow in the first half. And then I do see the Niners, although the Jets have a respectable defense and very tough to run on, I think the Niners dial up their, dial up their plays and get, get settled. Uh, Jets still have Hassan Reddick, they're one of their defensive ends sitting out. They do have other players, but I, I I feel if they, if the Jets' defensive line fail to get pressure on Brock Purdy consistently throughout the game, then this will be very hard for the Jets to uh, stay in this game. I think the Niners have the edge here, considering their run heavy, their scheme out of this world, and uh, if they protect the quarterback, they'll find weapons. That they'll just get the hands and the, they get the ball in the hands of their best players, and they usually do the rest. So, um, but Jets can do the same, but they must get pressure on the quarterback. Just like the Niners are going to look to get pressure on Aaron Rodgers. I do have the Niners winning this one, 30-16. to 16. And that wraps up all 16 matchups for week one. Uh, you know, next week we're going to have the recap real quick, see how it went out, the wins versus the losses. And uh, if any of the scores get right, uh, it'll be a first time in uh, Naderade's picks that we're going to break down a game because we got the score identical. You know you, you know how we do it, man. No bets, no odds. Uh, I didn't have an upset of the lurk. I did not have an upset alert of the week because it's week one. Uh, like if I had said that uh, it would be an upset if the um, Broncos beat the Seahawks, it would be based on odds and Vegas and stuff. I'll make my own odds after I see at least I would say three weeks of football. Starting week four, I'll start to throw out the throw in those upset alerts. Week four, week four. So if I start any sooner, you can call me out on that, and then I will do push ups for y'all right here on the floor. Anywho, you know what it is. Uh, love y'all guys. Uh, football is back. And uh, enjoy week one. Uh, Naderade out.